Good morning, or good afternoon, almost. So we are reaching the end of this highly inspiring mo morning. Thank you very much for having invited us to participate here. Thank you on behalf of this Bertelsmann Foundation. I'm going to be talking about the new scenarios for duality in Spain. My presentation will be divided into three different parts. First, I will be talking about the Alliance for Dual Vocational Training. Then I would like to talk about the system that should be introduced in Spain in terms of incentives so as to assist companies. And if I have time, at the end, I would like to share with you a couple of examples here in Spain which are useful for the future. Alliance for Dual Vocational and Training. We are talking about a network of companies, teaching centers, and different organizations which are engaged with the development of a quality VAT system in Spain. This is an initiative that was created in the year 200 and 2015 because we thought that we needed more cooperation among the different stakeholders, cooperation to try and improve the dual system. We had the feeling as if there were many attempts, many efforts, but this was not a shared effort. In each the region, in the different regions, there were different programs and we thought that we had to learn from each other and generate synergies. So in this alliance, what we want is to have more and more young people, companies and teaching centers participating within the same system, join hands to give a quality training. If not, it won't be sustainable in the long run. And this alliance is based upon four basic pillars. Those are the ones that you can see right here on the screen. First of all, as I have already told you, we are talking about a network. There are different events, publications, workshops. The different members of the alliance, through these different activities, we want to learn together, to learn from each other so that we can develop our system. More than, we have more than 600 members in our alliance. More, most of them are companies or associations of companies. We also have many different education institutions and we also have a wide array of institutions such as chambers of commerce, trade unions, we in we work in La Rioja department, but we also work in Andalusia. So the idea is to work with different stakeholders, but each of them and we all together share the common goal. And the goal is to contribute and make vocational training better. And of course, I would like to invite all the different companies and ask teaching centers to become members. There are different membership requirements, but I'm sure that any of you can become members and there are no fees to pay. The only thing that we ask from you is to be willing to make an effort to contribute so that this model can become more and more successful and have higher quality. The second pillar is to give technical advice to our companies, technical counseling. This morning we have been talking about it. Without companies, we wouldn't be able to have this program. We need to be joining hands with companies so that students can go to them. Sometimes companies do not know about the possibilities the dual VET offers. That is why in our foundation, in the year 2015, in the three communities where we are, that is Catalonia, Madrid, and Andalusia, we created a group of advisors so that they could assist companies, so that they could give counseling and they could feel supported because it is clear that the first 
due of the T project is going to be essential. If they fail with their first project, maybe they won't be willing to continue. So we need technical assistance. And this is what we have seen. The very first project has to be successful. We have already been working with 1,000 different companies, but we have also been assisting teaching centers. Most of the different associations that we have been working with have become members. Communication is essential too. Dual VET is still not well enough known. We need to know about it. We need awareness raising, and that is why from this alliance we want to make the biggest effort to make it known, to talk about it. We have organized 175 different events to talk about what we are doing, and this is also linked to the petition of our group of young people. In October, in October, we will be celebrating our third forum in Valencia, and you are all invited. That will be taking place on the 4th of October. And we will be sharing with you a new platform, a new platform that wants to become a benchmark for dual VET in Spain. In this platform, we will have young people, companies, and also teaching centers. Our goal is to be able to convey the information these different groups require. We want also to improve communication and cooperation among the members already in the alliance. That is essential so as to be efficient. In terms of communication, we have created a video to explain what we are doing. And also we have organized a campaign aimed at young people and aimed at parents. We use banners, posters and the social media. And of course, the different members of the Alliance can use this whole campaign. The whole idea is to have a multiplying effect. We have designed these concepts, and the more they are used, the better, because uh, we will be able to reach everybody. There are also two videos about cooperative projects that can be freely used. Our aspiration. Our goal is for all the members of the Alliance working from this perspective to share their ideas so that we can all benefit. Like that, we will have a much bigger impact. The fourth pillar in this Alliance are working groups. Dual VT system is still new. There are still many gaps, and that is why we have created 10 different groups, and the idea is to work together to improve our approach. And we have already started obtaining good results, and right now I would like to talk a little bit about that. The first working group was talking, was working around regulations and different proposals, and here we are working with public and private centers. The Ventersman Foundation, Chambers of Commerce, but we also have two members coming from the Ministry of Education. And uh, this has been very helpful for us to try and see and know what can be done and what cannot be done. We have elaborated different proposals, different regulatory measures that we think should be taken into account so as to improve VT. Rosalia Serrano was already talking about the royal decree, the new royal decree, and these considerations are being heard, are being taken into account, and of course we are very, very pleased. It is for us very pleasing to see that we are being listened to. And also we are talking and working around tutors. We need to train our tutors. That is essential. And that is something also that requires some sort of official recognition. So we want to 
create a handbook or a tutor's manual, a tutor's handbook. And this has been also essential to start working about the training approaches for tutors. And in from now until the year 2018, we are going to be using these different tutor training approaches. We want to train trainers so that they can give training to these tutors in other regions of Spain too. And the third group is working with uh, teaching centers. Teaching centers, but also with different education departments in the different regions. And we have started by analyzing which are the barriers, which are the obstacles for VET, for dual VET. And we wanted also to know about the attitude teachers had. This study had been done in cooperation with the University of Barcelona in Catalonia, Madrid, Andalusia, Asturias, and Castilla-La Mancha. And I think that the results are being very positive. More than 400 teaching centers have been engaged. And we have been doing more than 900 surveys or interviews to teachers and professors. I know that many of you come from teaching sectors, so I would also like to tell you about some results which are quite significant. The attitude professors and teachers have, their attitude in terms of VET is very positive. I was surprised to see that the directors of those teaching centers where dual and non-dual approaches are taking place, they think that this is very successful in terms of dual training implementation. And they, they think that this makes it possible for students to be better trained and to get much more interesting skills. Well, I think that it is very interesting to see their attitude. And for them, it is important to have continuity in terms of uh, trainers. And it would be useful also, or it is also useful to work always in networks. What has to be improved? Information about dual VET system. Yes, that has to be improved. The Basque Country has not participated in the program. And we asked people in the service how many of them or whether they have been given information about dual VET. And 20% of them said no, that they haven't been given any information. Then we also asked whether they had been involved in any specific training activity, and only 30% of them said yes. So this is something that has to be improved. This is something that we need to change. And I wanted to speak about it. We have also seen through this study that you can all uh, read about, you know, and it will be available on our website. You will be able to read that one of the most important concerns for teachers, for trainers, is fairness, equal, having equal access, having equal access in terms of benefiting from this training. And part of teachers don't feel very comfortable in terms of the companies selecting the students or the apprentices. Well. It is true that all this is very complex, but it seems as if part as if part of the teachers have doubts about it. And then we also have a group working around the topic of quality. We have been working with indicators, indicators for companies and for teaching centers to try and assess the quality. In this first stage, these indicators will be used to start analyzing the situation. Not all the indicators will be useful for the companies or for all the teaching centers, but they will be interesting. 
or important to get to know each other. And then we are going to end up by establishing standards so that they can measure or compare the results in, sort, in terms of those standards. I think that DUAVT is moving forward. I think that things are going well, but we still have a lot to do. We've had GVT in Spain for five years now. There are 24,000 students in dual VET in Spain at the moment, which is a large number, but not very much when you think that there are 800,000 in uh, VET in Spain at the moment. And quite clearly, the uh, percentage of people who take VET courses and get a job afterwards is far higher than those who don't. And so this is an important way of reducing uh, youth unemployment and creating quality employment. So after these years that uh, Rosalia called the pilot years, and they were pilot years because we've been trialing things. It's now, especially through the new legislation that's uh, being brought out, that it would, we feel it would be a good idea to set up some kind of incentive system for companies, for private companies. Other countries have organized other kinds of incentives. Uh, some have been more successful than others. For example, Germany uh, set up a scheme for a collaboration on these different projects between SMEs. There's also a tax that uh, certain uh, companies of a certain size have to pay if they don't opposite, uh, offer apprenticeship uh, programs. This hasn't happened in Spain. Uh, Although there have been some tweaks and improvements to the uh, training and learning contract, which include, for example, paying Social Security po payments during the time that the person is contracted. We'd like to highlight that what we don't think would be a good idea would be for in some way to use public money to top up the money that private companies pay uh, apprentices. Why? Because we think that companies need to invest in apprentices because this will encourage them to try to get youngsters to learn as much and as quickly as possible so as to be able to get a return on their investment. And also, this will mean that the youngsters will feel closer ties to the company. Over the last two years, we've helped many companies and we've seen that actually salaries aren't, isn't the main barrier for companies participating, participating in these programs. The real breaks are the bureaucracy that people have to go through, the amount of time that it takes from their workers. And these are issues that need to be facilitated through a, a series of incentives that we feel should be put out there. There are four lines that we feel should be very appropriate. Firstly, to facilitate and to fund using public money, some kind of a, a group of uh, in researchers in uh, VET. That would be very positive. 
as a set of people who know VET very well and who know dual VET from their region very well to advise companies when they first get involved. Because in that way, these first uh, projects, which are so uh, crucial, would be far more successful. The second type of incentives that we propose supports the intermediate uh, levels to support collaborative projects. Of course, dual VET has potentially a greater impact if it involves an intermediate institution, for example, a business or professional association, a cluster, uh, some kind of professional body, etc., because they have more possibilities of lasting over time and get the quality of the project controlled. But of course, these intermediary bodies don't always have the necessary structures to offer the support that companies need. And that's where we'd like to promote a funding line to support these intermediate levels in collaborative projects so long as there's a given number of participating companies and a commitment to make the project stable. The third incentive that you can see here is, of course, related to a company's size. A company size is very relevant in dual VT for small and micro companies. One of the major difficulties out there is the time that the company's tutor has to dedicate. And here we need to differentiate between two different training roles that the company has in dual VAT because you've got just a sort of a brief I'm going to go off tack here for a moment something that we need to agree upon in for everybody that works in dual VAT is the names that we call things because uh, I've noticed from Jorge's paper that you call instructors what we call tutors so we need to Dis differentiate clearly and talk about trainers and tutors and decide what terms we're going to use. A trainer for us is a person who every day gets knowledge across practical knowledge across to the apprenticeship and it may well be uh, one or several people throughout the apprentice's time there. A tutor, a tutor is a person that knows about the whole of the program, that coordinates with the um, a VET uh, college and coordinates with them. When we're talking about collaborative projects with micro companies, with very small companies, they don't need, each company doesn't need a company tutor. They could actually make use of an external tutor who could together coordinate a project, control how the project is uh, progressing relate back to the technical college and remove the burden from many of the uh, schools. And this would help very small micro companies to participate once again. The final incentive line that we propose is complementary training, which is outside. Um, dual VET. It turns out that many companies' needs aren't aligned with the, the what the VET school can offer. But if we could provide training, additional training that covered the specific needs of a company then dual VT would be far more uh, attractive for companies and for youngsters. It's true that nowadays, of course, um, companies can offer complementary or additional training, but if they're paying for an apprentice, if they've got a tutor supporting 
an apprentice. And you, normally a tutor is somebody who's from within the company who's a very valuable employee and he's spending time. So we're very demanding with companies. Perhaps we should try to think of actually adapting, getting tailor-made or additional uh, training for companies so that VET, dual VET comes become something a lot more. So with these four measures, we think that we really could speed up a process. And I agree with Jorge that we need to do things little by little. But on the other hand, there are many youngsters who are out there waiting for us. There are many companies that need skilled youngsters that can't find them. So we need to pull our socks up. And to finish. I wanted to just comment a couple of examples of collaborative projects that we think. Have I got time? Maybe inspiring and that may form a part of future scenarios. For example, in the Bertelsmann Foundation and in the Alliance for Dual VAT until the end of 2018 at the very least. We're going to be concentrating our efforts on supporting collaborative uh, projects to try to improve. This is a project from the insurance sector where there's no specific uh, training courses and yet there is a need, a major need for skilled professionals as insurance managers, and in this case, in Zurich, with the support of uh, the Department of Education in Catalonia, has adapted its syllabus so that the training that is offered is offered to the cover the specific needs of this sector. This has been done with two VET colleges, a further two large uh, companies have also come on board, in this case MAP Friend Alliance, and, and the final, final case, just to finish so that we can all go and have lunch, and having done our homework, is the example of two associations in Madrid, Agremia and Amitel, these business associations that uh, have many SMEs as members saw that there was a, a need for specific skilled practitioners. So to, they came together. They got the support of the um, education ministry in Madrid and our supporters, of course, as well. And they've organized these three courses in uh, three courses which follow the dual VET uh, model. Over 60 companies have now confirmed that they're going to be participating in this program, and 140 um, places will be offered to apprentices. They couldn't do that on their own, they need, it's necessary to come together to collaborate. And it may work be that through collaboration we can go further. I should like to finish what I had to say with this, and I hope you've found it interesting. And once again, I'd like to thank you all for participating and for the previous speakers who have been very inspiring. Thank you.